All right, let's try out the new weapon. It might be a little too strong. Welcome to another devlog about Blood Rot 1918, a four player zombie co-op game just like the good old days. Also it's got a Steam page. You will wishlist Blood Rot 1918 on Steam. Up until now there have only been two weapons in the game, the 1911 and the MP18, so it's about time to add a new one. And to do that I had to revisit one of the older systems in the game. Four letters, two muscles, arms. That's right, your character's arms, the first person view model. Remember that other devlog where I couldn't figure out a good way to animate the arms, and then I burnt out for the best part of a year, only to come back fresh and finally overcome my struggles. Yeah, well I scrapped it and remade the whole system from the ground up. You're fucking idiot. I was never fully satisfied with the solution I came up with before. Essentially the weapon and the arms would play the same animation at the same time, so they looked like they lined up, but in reality they weren't connected at all. This made it difficult to add those nice little touches like weapon sway and stuff like that, and it also meant I needed to make a lot of animations for both the gun and the arms. So I had to think about it, and I kept thinking about it. And I thought about it and I thought about it till my brain turned into mush, so I had to get it written down somewhere. For this kind of thing, I usually use Miro so I can visualise the problem in front of me. I'm not sponsored by Miro, but I would absolutely sell out if they asked me. I made a diagram that laid out all the animations I would need and then came up with a new approach to the system. After a bunch of digging around all over the internet, I was inspired by this FPS asset and this GDC talk about first person animation in Overwatch. So I set to work and I came up with this. Basically, I have a bone for the weapon on the player rig, and then under that bone, I have a bone for each hand. In Unity, I attach the gun to the weapon bone using the animation rigging package, and then I attach each hand to the respective hand bone using IK. This means I can move the gun around and the hands will stay attached to it, even in the middle of animations. This unlocked a whole new way of animating the first person arms. Using a bunch of sine waves, noise, and maths, I created a way to procedurally animate the walk cycle. So instead of having to go into Blender and animate everything by hand, key by key, I can just input a bunch of parameters and All of this just works. The same goes for Weapon Sway, the equip animations, unequip animations, as well as the recoil. It's all just numbers. The numbers basically. What do they mean? Quick side note before we add the new weapon. Blow. I have a Patreon page, so if that's your kind of thing and you want to support the project, you can do so there. Okay, new rig, new animations, procedural animations, mathematics. Let's put it all into practice with a new weapon. I introduce to you Blood Rot's third weapon, the Tank of Air. This rifle, developed by the Germans, was inspired by weapons like the Elephant Gun and other big game rifles in order to pierce thick armour once tanks became prevalent on the battlefield. I bought this model way way back in a sale and now I can finally add it to the game. After setting up the procedural animation parameters and animating the reload in Blender, this is what I ended up with. Remember, the only hand animated thing here is the reload, everything else is driven by code. This whole new system and everything I had made in a new Unity project, that's just the way I like to build. After that I brought it into the actual game project, deleted the old system and updated the existing weapons to use the new system. I did have to redo some of the animations using the new rig, but it was worth it, and I reckon this new rig will make it easier for me to contract out animators to help with things. So now that the tank gewehr was in the game, I could start tweaking all the values. I gave it a really high penetration value because A, it makes sense, I mean this thing's meant to shred tanks, what do you think it's going to do to a bunch of rotten meat bags? And B, to make up for the fact that it's really slow and only shoots one bullet at a time. Someone pointed out on my Discord, which you should join by the way, that the rifle still looked a bit underpowered, in that you had to have the zombies lined up perfectly, otherwise it would miss. I agreed with this, and so in the end I made the bullet thick, by giving the raycaster radius using the built-in functions in Unity. So now I can tweak any gun to make it slightly more forgiving, and most importantly, fun. And that was the new weapon and animation system done, for now. This all took way longer than I'm making out here. It took ages to build this system and get it all working in the game, especially all the time I spent thinking about it before even writing a line of code. After that, I needed a break from animation programming, so I thought to myself, how about I spruce up the destroyed church area with some environment assets? It can't take that long. We'll be home by Christmas. Home by Christmas. Home by Christmas. 
Okay, so this probably took longer than the damn animation system, and it's still not even fully complete. I spent ages looking for assets that would work, and came across this modular photoscan ruins set. Then I had to prepare the assets by generating a bunch of LODs for each one, as well as a collider mesh. This is where something like Unreal's Nanite or some other automatic LOD system would come in handy and speed up development time. Then somewhere around here I took a couple of weeks off for Christmas and New Year, just to relax. But then I got back on the grind. The hardest part of making the destroyed church was by far the roof. I whipped up a quick roof piece with broken slates and then immediately deleted it because it looked gash. Now I was starting to panic, like seriously look at that thing. But then I remembered I had an asset pack that I was going to use later on that had some nice roof pieces and I managed to make something work. All in all, it went through a few iterations but I've finally come up with something that I think doesn't look too bad. It still needs a lot of work, details and polish, like little bits of rubble and candles and other random crap. But for a first pass it looks fine. Just don't look at the tunnel. Brother, uh... Anyway, that's this area of the map pretty much complete. I'm definitely going to plan things out better and spend more time prototyping the layout next time. So I've got a much better idea of what I'm actually making because I was flying pretty blind on the church area. And I've already started that here with the German trench system and this bunker with a hole in it. So look forward to that. Well, that's most of what I've been working on so far, but let's talk about what's next. My biggest priority starting right now is getting the game ready for playtesting so that I can finally share what I've made with all of you and get feedback on it. Here's a list of what all that consists of. Pause the video if you need. If you remember from the last video, I said we almost had a thousand wish lists. Well, you guys went hard on the wish lists after that, so I'll just show what happened. Now we've got over five and a half thousand wish lists, which is pretty bonkers. I've got no idea how many wish lists it takes to get onto Steam's top 2000 list but I still reckon we can get there. So if this looks like a game you want to play, the link to wishlist it is in the description. That's everything I've got for today. I'm going to get back to work on the game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.